Um, well, who are we going to protonate? Um, well, you have to protonate somebody uh, nucleophilic, basically. You're going to protonate somebody basic or nucleophilic. Well, we were just learning that pi bonds are nucleophiles. So that, does that mean the pi bond is going to go at the head or the tail? Pi bond is a nucleophile, but that put it at the head of the tail of an arrow. It's going to put it at the tail. That's right. That's something you might want to review. A nucleophile is somebody who wants to donate electrons. That means that it uh, has to be at the tail of the arrow to be donating those electrons. Okay. And who's it going to donate electrons to? What needs to pick up that proton? So we can write that like this. the structure of sulfuric acid a little bit. So here's the structure of sulfuric acid. So here's the reaction that uh, we would get if we were protonating this double bond. So now we can draw uh, what the uh, intermediate is going to look like from that. All right. Now the question here is, should we put the hydrogen on the number two and the and the positive charge on the number four, or should we put the positive charge on the number two and the hydrogen on the number four? This is that same ambiguity we saw before. Positive so, charge on the two. Because it's more substituted. This is that same issue we saw with the previous addition. Um, you want to form the more substituted carbocation. That means it's the number four who's getting protonated. Uh, oftentimes, people might not even show this hydrogen because it's a hidden hydrogen. Uh, but we're putting the hydrogen here, so the positive charge get, and, ends up here. Uh, and then we would have. sulfate uh, that's also produced as a byproduct that we're not really too interested in here. So that would give us this. All right, and that gives us that positive charge here. Well, um, what's going to happen uh, next? Does this want to be at a head or a tail? It wants to be at the head. And we have to ask, is there anybody around that we can put at the tail here? The that's right. Not the, the oxygen, sulfate. The oxygen, the yeah, the oxygen. That was the whole reason we put the water in in the first place over here to act as the nucleophile at this why not the sulfate? Why wouldn't the... Uh... Sulfates are actually not nucleophiles. Okay. Um, you kind of just have to have memorized. Right. Sulfates are not nucleophilic. That kind of just has to be memorized. Okay. okay. Um, so we don't need to worry about this uh, competing. That was the reason, one of the reasons that we used sulfuric acid, because we have memorized that it's a good protonator, but then it doesn't act as a competing nucleophile, so it won't get in the way of our water. All right, so that would give us this. So now let's draw the product from this step. Let's draw what we would get when the water attacks the number two. I'm running out of room, but. Uh... That's good. Once we have the arrows, we should definitely be able to draw Once we have the arrows, we should definitely be able to draw the next intermediate. So when the water attacks, we end up with this, and it's good that you notice the charge. This ends up neutral, and the oxygen is at the initial tail, so it ends up positive. And so we need something to deprotonate that oxygen. Now we can use the sulfate. Sulfates uh, can't be used as nucleophiles, uh, but it's permissible to use it here to deprotonate. Or some people would use another water molecule. Either would be fine. But it's actually better to use the sulfate because this is actually only acid catalyzed, which means we should be regenerating the acid at the end. So just like we used up the acid in the first step, now we should regenerate the acid in this step. And then you draw the tail from the oxygen, then you oxygen to the hydrogen, and then uh, that bond back onto the oxygen. Sounds good. So we have to break out the hydrogen. And 
now we don't need to bother drawing the product from that, because now we've got to the product we were trying to get to all along. All right, and now we've completed our synthesis. All right, now we haven't really given uh, an answer yet. So now we have to put all the steps together to say what our answer is. So what did we say we were going to do? Well, first, we decided to add the chert butyl oxide to give us the elimination. That got us to here. All right, and then we had to do the addition. And we did an acid catalyzed addition. And actually, that was it. So your answer would be these two steps. And you'd want to number them to show that these are separate. First you would add this, and then you would wait for this to finish. And then you would add this as a separate step. Um, this actually went through a couple of separate steps. First it protonated, then the water added, and then it deprotonated. But those three separate steps all will occur just from this one step of the reagents we added. So this would be our answer. Okay, so what did we learn here about syntheses? Um, now remember your first answer was to do a substitution to substitute an OH for the chloride. That was good because it showed that you were noticing one of the changes. Uh, but the problem was that we weren't noticing the other change, which was not only are we changing the functional group, we're changing which carbon is attached to the functional group. And this is where the numbering becomes so crucial. Without the numbering, it's not so clear that the functional group has moved off the number four and onto the number two. So we really have to use the numbers to articulate. So when you said to yourself what changes have happened, you probably said, well, the change that happened is that they replaced a chlorine with an OH. But what we should have said is, we were replacing a chlorine on the number four with an OH on the number two. That is, you want to use the numbers to actually articulate what the changes are, so you can see what's happening there. Uh, and then we had a kind of dilemma. How can you move a functional group from one carbon to another? Well, now we've learned a trick for that. A good way to move a functional group onto an adjacent carbon is to do an elimination, because the elimination creates a functional group between both of these carbons, where there used to be only a functional group on the number four. Or do an addition. Uh, well, the first step was elimination, right? The first step was to put the pi bond between the number two and the number four. So, um, it, uh, by the way, it's important to realize carbon-carbon um, pi bonds are considered functional groups. So this is considered a functional group here. So in this picture, we only had one functional group on the number four, but now there's a functional group on both the two and the four. And then when we do the addition, if we use the right regiochemistry, we can end up with the functional group on a different carbon than we started with. So this is simply a trick that you have to have in your toolkit. If you see that the product has the functional group, if you see that the functional group has moved from one carbon to an adjacent carbon, if you see that the functional group has moved in the product from one carbon to an adjacent carbon, there's a very good chance that the way to do that is first form a pi bond with an elimination, and then do an addition. Okay. Um, it's going to have the right uh, regiochemistry there. Okay. Um, now, I said when we started these synthesis problems that the most important key to synthesis is knowing the reactions cold. And you can see there's no way you could have done uh, this addition here if you hadn't known about the sulfuric acid and water addition. And since your instructor uh, assigned this problem, maybe this is a good time to go back and review um, those reactions that you need. Um, there's a really good coverage of these reactions in the, alke um, in the addition chapter of the second language book. Okay. So that would be a really good chapter to go back and uh, read uh, there. And it also goes over syntheses pretty good. Okay. Um, so that would be a good thing to go back. Um, because if you don't have the reactions at your fingertips, obviously you can't come up with them for synthesis. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance dash teacher dot com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.